Gibson style guitar, which again, as I said before, this is an Epiphone. This is uh, not a Gibson. This guitar is about, oh, roughly 600 bucks brand new, but it's still constructed just like a Gibson. You've got the flame maple top, you have the same tailpiece, same type humbucking pickups, same knob and switch configuration. You have a mahogany neck with a rosewood board, trapezoid inlays. Just a different style headstock with the name Epiphone on it. it. has Grover tuners. The neck is mahogany. And the body is mahogany on the back. Just the top is maple, just like a regular Gibson. Now what are the pluses of this guitar? Pluses are that the guitar has a lot of volume and uh, a lot of punch power. It also plays very nice. I mean, for for something that's constructed overseas, it is really built well, I have to admit. The problems with the Gibson-style guitar is that the headstock, which is this part here, they're glued on. They're a separate piece. Now you talk to anybody who's owned a Gibson guitar that's had it for any length of time and it's gotten knocked over, they'll tell you the headstock pops off real easy and it's a pain to get it repaired. They're almost never right after that. Also the neck is glued to the body. That can be a problem if it gets dropped. The fretboard on a Gibson is almost flat very little bit of a curve to it but it's pretty much flat it has a whole different feel to it when you're playing it if you're used to playing a fender if you like that kind of thing what, what's nice about this is you can keep your action really low and you can bend notes and they don't fret out because of that flat radius that they have on the neck their necks are also fairly no I wouldn't say thin but they're not fat necks 
Overall, my opinion is if you are looking for something with a lot of chunkiness to it, for playing heavier music, or you want something with a smoothness to it for playing jazz or that type of stuff, I'd go with a Gibson. It's pretty versatile guitar for those types of music. Now the Fender, the body on a Fender is usually alder or ash. Your pickups are single coils. Now this model happens to have a rosewood fretboard on it. Necks are made of maple. You can get them with a maple fretboard too. The neck is screwed on, not glued on. The headstock is made from the same piece of wood. It's exact. It's all one piece. The reason Leo Fender did that is because it's stronger. Here we can see the back of the neck. And you see that it is indeed one piece of wood all the way down, and then screwed to the body. Now, when Fender first did this, other guitar manufacturers made fun of them. Ah, that's not strong at all. He didn't glue it on. La la la. Well, if you've ever seen anybody try to break one of these guitars, I can tell you they'll they'll testify to just how strong them four screws are. The reason Leo did it is because if you should happen to damage the neck really bad, you can take it off and put another one on. You don't have to take it back to a store, have it sent off to a repairman. He's got to tear the whole thing apart. Get all the glue off and you know just it's just a mess trying to do a glue on neck this is four screws off it comes and here we see the back of the body that's the tremolo cavity it contains the springs you can see the back side of the tremolo nice thing about a fender guitar is you can get a lot of sounds out of it and i mean a lot of different sounds in fact i could even show you how to make this sound like a gibson they do have a curved fretboard. The reason that Leo Fender did that is he wanted to fit the natural curve of the finger to make it easier to play chords. Now you, you can get Fenders nowadays with a flatter radius, although I'm trying to compare the basics of Fender with the basics of Gibson as the way they were made back in the day when we made them here in the United States and they were unique unto themselves. Nowadays you can get a Fender that's like a Gibson and a Gibson that's like a Fender. But some guys don't like this because when you bend notes they tend to fret out because of that curve. Other guys love it. Myself, I can't get enough of it. I just think it's great because I like a high action anyway. Okay, so what's the downside of a Fender? Well, noisy pickups. Them single coil pickups will pick up anything and everything that's turned on. If it's a neon light, if it's a soda machine, if it's on the circuit or it's anywhere nearby, it's going to get amplified. There's ways around it though. What Fender has done recently is they'll wind this coil opposite of this coil. So when you have it in this position and these two pickups are on, they cancel hum. Same with these two. You have anyone on individually and you'll hear the hum. So, you know, if you're pretty good at it, you can, in the middle of a song, flip the switch. Or you can do what I do, which is just hurry up and turn the volume knob off if you get done playing a song. So there you have it. They're completely different animals. Depending on what you want to play, make your choice. My suggestion is, stop listening to everybody else. Go to a guitar store. Play the both of them. See which one you like the best. Myself, I prefer Fender, but I have a Gibson for certain things because when it comes to certain songs only that guitar will sound the way it's supposed to sound video on a difference between these guitars now this one here I built this one from scratch this has a bunch of tricks done but I'll do another video on this later for now I'm just gonna play a little while we say goodbye